So when we try to look at how to best apply these things, we already know, okay, there's no industry standards. There are some great guidelines out there, as I've mentioned, and we're going to learn about some of those in this class. But there are also some themes that you're going to typically run into. So here's one that we've talked about before, innovation versus the familiar. So if we look at a lot of development tools today, right, they tend to continue with their previous interfaces most of the time. Right, people like that. You get an upgrade, it has new features, but it's still familiar. So every time Microsoft changes their interface in Word or Excel, how many people complain? A lot. Pretty much, I don't know, 99% of the people will complain because now the, the interface has changed and what you have to do when the interface changes? You need to relearn it. And when you have a job where your focus is on dealing, let's say you're in accounting, you know, dealing with incoming, incoming bills that you have to pay, do you want to have to go back and now learn a new interface? No, it's really irritating. Now, there are a lot of reasons why you would want to keep your old type of interface, right? You have your users, as we just mentioned. They do like familiarity. You don't, then don't have to deal with these issues of relearning, right? So you have also backward compatibility. So with Microsoft Word, for example, if you create a document in say 2007, Word 2007, you can still use it in Word 2010. There are still elements of it that are familiar. So there are a lot of reasons to keep things familiar. But then what about innovation? Because we can design things to make them more efficient, right? And more effective. And times do change. Where we have new technologies available and new ways of doing things. So then the question is, how do you balance this out? How do you decide whether you want to keep things consistent and familiar, or if you have a great innovative idea whether you want to implement that? Well, again, we have to deal with this balance. There's no black and white, which makes it really hard to write an exam question on it. But here's my new hint. Actually, I guess it's not Hill, my subtle hint. This bottom part is a great question for a midterm because I'm going to give you a little bit of a guideline in making that decision. So as I mentioned, you do need to balance these things and decide what is going to help the user the most. So if I come up with something innovative, is the usability enhanced enough that it is worth the user making that effort? Well, it really depends on the product. And it depends on the users. So in general, you want to keep familiarity, this, this consistency, if you are working in an, in an industry or a domain where the users tend to change very quickly. So where you have rapid turnover of personnel or rapid turnover of a customer base. So a spreadsheet would be a good example. Right, so we have, does someone have a question? No? Right, so, if you have, um, uh, so if you have a customer base where you know, okay, I'm going to be designing a system for, let's say, a very basic, simple help desk, which whether you know it or not actually has a very high turnover rate. Keeping things consistent is going to make a lot more sense than completely changing things in general. Now, when do you want to use enhanced usability? Typically, it's when most users' time involves routine operations, where learning is a small part of the picture, so that relearning is not that much of a burden, but where the enhanced usability in the more global, in the bigger picture, is really going to make their job faster, easier, more efficient, and more effective. So you want to think about this balance in, in, in terms of how long is it going to take to learn how to do this new uh, routine or use this new tool versus how much time are they going to spend using it. 
Make sense? Yes. Um, to keep up with competition. Yes, competition actually can make a big big difference in this. So with with Apple, for example, if you actually look at the percentage of users that Apple has for the iPhone versus Android, Android actually is a much larger customer base. So there are actually more and more users who are using Android. And so to try to keep up, Apple is actually making changes. Hopefully for them, that's going to work. Apple tends to actually be pretty good at that. But um, it's again one of those things you have to balance out. But absolutely, com you know, competition with other products makes a difference. And that's also all going to go into that formula as to do I want to keep the familiar versus innovative. So let me give you another quick example. Let's look at Windows 8. Right, I know some of you are laughing already. So if we look at Windows 8, who knows what one of the main reasons is that Microsoft gave for making such dramatic changes in Windows 8? Tablets. Tablets. Right, so here comes, here comes tablets, right? They are taking a huge market share and it's just growing. And Windows was designed for the desktop. So Microsoft decides they're going to completely redo the operating system because now there's this new competition. I'm not going to comment on whether it's a success or failure at this point because people will argue both ways. But that actually, you know, it's, it's an example of how competition can really go into this equation. And depending on the type of risks you're willing to take, it can have positive or negative effects. But that's one reason why it's really important to talk to your users. That's going to tell you how risky it is. 